Hey, this is Ben Cubbage from Elevated Trips, elevatedtrips.com. I want to give you a little quick 30 second uh, update on traveling in trains in China. You see behind me is the little ticket checker. Uh, to enter the train and to get, when you depart the train, you'll need, you'll take your ticket like this and you'll put it through a little machine. But what you also need is a Chinese local ID uh, to, to be able to do that now. And so obviously foreigners don't have a Chinese ID or what's called a Shenfen Jin. So if you're traveling on a passport, you're gonna need to, you won't be able to go through the main line. You're gonna have to get, find the line that has the actual physical person and you're gonna have to give him your ticket and your passport and he's gonna check your ticket and your passport, probably take two seconds and he's gonna let you through. So what I wanna say is the main lines, the automatic little robot lines that you go through, you're not allowed to go through those as a foreigner because you don't have a Chinese local ID. Uh, what you're gonna to need to do is go through the one that has an actual person in it. So that's gonna go for when you get on the train and when you get off the train. So make sure you do that. Uh, don't waste time getting in the, the wrong line um, and you know getting in, caught in hundreds of other people. Uh, go directly to the line with the actual person and he will help you show him your passport, show him your ticket, and he will let you through without having to uh, put your ticket through the automatic scanner machine. Hey, another little quick tip on checking in the train station. You'll see lots of Chinese people uh, automatically checking their ticket at these um, automatic ticket booths. As a foreigner, you cannot do that. But when you're picking up your ticket, you cannot go to these electronic booths. They don't take passports. The uh, Chinese system is not quite totally ready for foreigners yet. What you actually have to do if you're going to the train station to pick up your physical train ticket, you'll need to go to the ticket booth and actually see a real person and go to the actual desk and uh, just show them your ticket number and your passport and they will give you your physical ticket. Remember, you, you cannot travel on electronic tickets in China. China still takes a paper ticket in the train station. So all these uh, little booths look really fun, uh, but don't waste your time there. They don't take passports. So you gotta go to the actual ticket teller, the real person sitting behind the desk. They'll be behind a little glass glass window, just kind of at like a bank, and uh, we'll give them your passport, your ticket number, and then they'll give you your physical paper ticket. Then you can enter the station. Hey, we're walking through the busy train station. Another little thing to keep in mind, if you're headed to Lhasa on the high altitude train from Xining to Lhasa, that's the highest railroad in the world, you're gonna need to first have in your hand a Tibet travel permit. What that means is you have to organize that with your travel agency, and they're gonna organize for you a group tour. You cannot travel by yourself independently in Lhasa or in the Mount Everest area. So if you're going to Lhasa on the, the high altitude train from Xining, make sure that you have the Tibet travel permit in your hand as a piece of paper before you get on the train. You're gonna need that to either board your train or your plane into Lhasa. So c contact your travel agency. Okay, so here are the Metro ticket booths. You can see they're all just a little electronic computer kiosks. Uh, while you cannot uh, pick up your train ticket from an electronic, electronic kiosk, you actually, you actually have to see a real person. If you get out of the train station and then you're traveling, you're making transfer to the subway or Metro, you can buy a ticket here. Uh, and most people use WeChat or Alipay to, uh, to buy these, these uh, subway tickets. So we happen to be right now in the Chengdu East train station. And uh, the, as soon as you come out in the train station, it connects to the Metro. So that's pretty easy. Uh, you just pop off the train and then buy a ticket to the Metro. Uh, it's usually pretty cheap, usually just a few quiet to travel to different locations within Chengdu. So uh, just know you cannot pick up your physical train ticket and electronic kiosk, but you can pick up metro tickets and subway tickets at an electronic kiosk. So just to be clear, I wanted to make that differentiation.
Okay, we're here at a little Chinese grocery store in the train station, and uh, I just want to talk a minute about how long you need to arrive at the train station before your train departs. So in general, with airplanes in China, you want to arrive about two hours before your flight departs to check in your baggage and get your luggage and everything. And the airports are relatively comfortable, so there's, there's some nice places to sit. Train stations, however, are a little have a little bit harder seats, not quite as comfortable, um, and it's obviously cheaper, so uh, the quality of people traveling is always not quite as high. And so what that means is you don't want to spend as much time in the train station. Really, in, for China train station, you can arrive an hour to an hour and a half before your train departs and you should be okay. Most trains uh, board about 30 minutes before the departure time, so keep that in mind. But the doors usually stay open to maybe 10 minutes before the departure time. So even if you're running a little bit late, you can probably slide by. There's a little bit more grace period than with an airplane. Um, so just keep that in mind. Personally, if my train happened to leave at 11 a.m., I'd probably arrive at the train station at 9.30 just to give myself a little extra window. You don't want to spend too much time in the train station because really there's, there's usually not that much fun stuff to do. Once in a while, there's a Starbucks, McDonald's, but uh, usually just kind of like Chinese kind of train stuff and there's a lot of people and they're really busy. So I like to minimize my time in the train station, get there about an hour and a half early, uh, pick up my tickets. That takes about 15 minutes to go to the ticket booth. And then actual check-in is really simple. You just go through a little x-ray machine. Often they're not even looking at the x-ray machine. You just throw your bags through it. They check your passport ticket and you're in. And then you find your gate uh, that's, uh, list, uh, with a, that's um, matching the train number on your ticket. So um, anyway, arrive about one hour to one and a half hours at your train station before, pick up your ticket, that's 15 minutes, check in, that's about 10, 15 minutes, and then find, find your seat that's gonna lead to your departure hall. So after you get out of your train station, usually what I do is I find a taxi that's gonna take me to my destination or hotel. Once you get to the hotel, they're probably gonna speak English. You can see behind me the taxi sign, so usually just follow taxi signs. They are written in English. And then just line up for the taxi queue. Yeah, it'll probably be a 10 to 15 minute wait to, to get a taxi by the time you get in a line. And then get in a standardized taxi. They're, they have a, a meter, they have a fare, so don't worry about them cheating you. Just give them your address in Chinese for the hotel or wherever you're going, and then the taxi will take you there. You, it's okay if you don't speak Chinese as long as you have the address and phone number of the place you're going to. That's the most important thing. So give that to the taxi driver. He'll charge you based on the meter. Usually it's gonna be between 40 to 200 kwai, uh, 200 Chinese renminbi uh, to go where you're going from the train station, depending where you're going in the city and what city it is. So just keep that in mind. Generally about seven to 30 US dollars for a taxi, depending where you're going. And uh, the taxis you'll get are usually pretty standardized. Some guy may approach you at the station and ask you to, to um, give you a ride. Those guys are probably going to be a little bit more expensive and try to rip you off a little bit more. So if we're me, I would just wait the extra time in the line uh, and just go with the standardized taxi fare and uh, that way you won't get ripped off. Okay, so this is what you're looking for for the, the registered taxi station. You get in this little line with a metal bar. You just follow the crowd to the signs that say taxi. We happen to be in Chengdu right now, so all these registered official taxis are green, and uh, the red light on the taxi means they're open. You can see a whole line behind me of probably about 20 to 30 taxis that are just waiting to pick up people. So uh, the line, it's probably about 20 people in line right now. Um, you can see behind me there's a few people, um, but it goes really fast because people just jump in the taxi and then show your address to the taxi driver and you are on your way. Of course there's other ways to travel. Uh, I prefer taxi because it's usually the, the quickest and least stress free. Of course it's often the most expensive if you're just trying to save a few dollars. You can also travel by metro or bus. Uh, those are also good ways to connect to the China railway station. Uh, of course, they're gonna take a little bit longer. If it was me and it was my first time in China, I'd just go taxi 
directly, spend a few extra dollars, and that way you just know you're gonna go right to your destination. Once you get to your hotel, uh, usually if it's a four or five star hotel, the staff are gonna speak pretty good English. Uh, even if it's not, if it's a hostel, they're gonna be able to speak English with you and uh, arrange, arrange all your tours and traveling. So once you get to your hostel hotel, you should be okay. There should be someone at the desk that speaks English there and should be able to take care of you. So if for me, I go right from the train station, take the taxi to the hotel, and then uh, just do that direct way. Uh, usually if you take the bus or train, there might be one or two stops and transfers. And it's possible, especially in big cities, to get a little bit lost in the, the chaos of these, these ginormous bus stations and subway stations, uh, especially during the transfer. So taxi is probably the easiest way and most direct. Um, but if you are looking to save a few dollars, you can be a little bit more adventurous and travel the subway system or bus system yourself. Cool, awesome, thanks. Check out our videos on China travel and subscribe to our YouTube. Thanks guys, you're awesome.